Hello, welcome to physics class. My name is Olu Jimmy Gabriel. Last week we talked about elasticity, and here are the correction to some of the assignment that was given. Now, a mass of five gram is projected with a rubber catapult. If the catapult is stretched through a distance of seven centimeter by an average force of seventeen newton. Calculate the instantaneous velocity of the sun when released. This is a catapult. And the rubber is stretched 7 cm. That means we have our extension to be E equals to 7 cm. And the mass of the stone is 5 gram. You are supposed to convert gram to kilogram by dividing 5 by 1000. Also, you must always, when you are dealing with elasticity, you always work in meters. So you divide 7 cm by 100 to give you your answer in millimeter. And the force with which the rubber was stretched is 70 Newton. Now, from our energy conversion, potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy. And we know our potential elastic energy is given by 1 over 2 times force times extension equals to 1 over 2 times mv squared, where v is the velocity. Now, 1 over 2, we cancel 1 over 2 since they are equal. Now, input your values. Your f is 70 and your extension is 7 over 100 equals to 5 all over 1000, which is our mass, multiplied by the velocity square. Now, you have v square equals to 2 times 70 times 7, which is 980. The square root of 980 will be equals to 31.3 meter per second. That is, the velocity with which the stone leaves the rubber is this. Example 2, assignment 2. A spring force, a spring of force constant 1500 newton is acted upon by a constant force of 75 newton. Calculate the potential energy stored in the spring. You know our force constant is 1500 newton while the force is 75 newton. Now, potential elastic energy equals to 1 over 2 multiplied by force and extension and this is also equals to the energy or work but f because we are not giving e so we replace e with f all over k from here we said f equals to ke so e equals to f all over k now substitute for e in this formula so you have this by the time you stop to your value, that is 1 over 2 times 75 times 75, divided by 1.500, your answer will be 1.9 joules. Another example is a spring 20 centimeter load long is stretched to 25 centimeter. That means the original length was 20 centimeter. When stretched to 25 centimeter, this is it. Now, the force that stretch it is 50 newton. Now, you find the extension when F extend it to 25. That means E1 equals to L minus L0. L0 mean original length. Equals to 25 minus 20 equals to 5 centimeter. Then you convert this 5 centimeter to meter, which is 5 divided by 100. Now, from... Our Hooke's law, we know F equals to KE. Now, 50 equals to K times 1,500. You use the force extension to find the force constant. By the time you cross multiply, you have K equals to 5,000 or 5 year 1, 5 year 20. 20 times, that means K equals to 50 times 20 equals to 1000 newton per meter. 
Now, when the force is now replaced with 100 newton, a new extension is produced. We now have another formula, the same thing, but we now use E2. That is, F equals to E2. Now, input your F, the new force. The constant remains the same because we are using the same spring times E2. Now, E equals to 100 divided by 1000, which is 0.1. Now, bring it back to meter. You multiply 100 to give you 10 centimeter. We have to find what? What will be the new its length when stretched by 100 newton? Assuming elastic limit is not exceeded. Now, the new length will now be original length plus the extension. The new extension, which is 20 plus 10 equals to 30. Now, by virtue of our law, we know that F is proportional to E. If F is double, extension will also double. When e F was 50, E was what? 20. Now, when E, I mean, our L is 20, that means E was 5. Now, when you double the force, that means extension will also double, which is what? 10. 10 plus 20 will give you 30. That is that on Oak's law. Now, we move to the today's topic, which is machines. Now, these are the objectives. You should be able to define force ratio, velocity ratio, efficiency. I write down mathematical relationship between them. How we can form formulate a formula that will link velocity ratio, efficiency, and together with that formula. Calculate calculation on simple machine. Draw an inclined plane, wheel axis, a lever, pulley, screw, a wedge, and where possible, do this to achieve a specific velocity ratio and lastly identify the simple machine that make up a given complicated machine such as bicycle now what is machine a machine is a device by which by means of which work can be done more conveniently that is a machine is a device that make our work easier or a machine is a device underline the word device that changes the direction or magnitude of force that is you can input small force let's say 10 newton and brings out 20 newton this is what you input this is what is coming out that's what you call machine now generally a machine enable us to overcome a large load by applying small effort. It is easier to roll a drum of oil up an inclined plane. This is an inclined plane. Just like this, a lorry, you put a plank here just to roll your drum onto the lorry. This is an angle theta with the ground. It is easier to roll a drum of oil up an inclined plane onto a lorry than to raise it up vertically without the inclined plane. You can roll it like this or you take it up like this. But this one will be more difficult than this, than to roll it along the plane. Now, example of machine. We have the lever, pulley, pliers, wheelbarrow, nut cracker, inclined plane, wedge, wheel and as screw jack and so on i believe we know lever pulley plier wheelbarrow wedge wedge is just like the tip of an axe this is called wedge or chisel all this we'll be looking at as we go in the course of this chapter now this is the diagram of a lever this is a pulley a wheel and axle, this is the screw, this is a wedge, and this is an inclined 
play. All of this is what we'll be looking at. How we can use this to achieve, to raise a load, a heavy load with small efforts. Now, these are the times we'll be using in machine. One is mechanical advantage. The ability of a machine to overcome a large load through a small effort is known as its mechanical advantage or force ratio. For instance, you want to carry a load of 50 newton with 10 newton effort. Now, the advantage is this is the load, this is your what? Effort. Both are measured in force. Look at it here. This is the formula. Mechanical advantage equals to load all over effort. The load you want to carry, effort is the force you are applying to carry the load. Both of them are in Newton. That is more reason we call it force ratio. That is, we are comparing two force, two forces together. Suppose a load of 20 newton is raised by an effort of 4 newton. You can see you are carrying a load of 20 newton with 4 newton effort using a machine. This is your mechanical advantage. Now, this is the relationship between load and effort. We call it mechanical advantage. Now, another one is velocity ratio. From the word velocity, we are talking about distance over time. Now, this is, the, this is defined as the ratio of the distance moved by the effort and the load in the same time interval. Now, imagine you want to jack up a, a car or a bicycle as you are pedaling. Now, look at the distance you paid and look at the distance the bicycle will move that means when you apply force with your leg we call it effort that is the distance moved by your effort and some by the load that is the distance moved by the bicycle now since we know that velocity is equal to distance over time since they are in equal time all over distance over time time we cancel time we now are left with distance moved by effort and distance moved by load this is the formula with which you will calculate your velocity ratio equals to distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load now efficiency the efficiency of a machine indicates how well its input energy is converted to useful output energy or work. In other words, what it means is that the energy should be able to convert the input energy to some certain percentage to bring out a useful work and it is expressed in percentage. Now look at This is the symbol for efficiency. Work output over work input. That is, this is the work you input into the machine. This is the outcome of the of your input work times 100 percent. But we know that work is defined as what force times distance. Now, since we are talking about the output, that means the load and the distance moved by the load. All over. This is the input, that means the effort you input into the machine and the distance moved by your effort. Now, effort times effort distance. Now, if you use, if I use X to represent load distance and Y to represent, to represent effort distance, we know that our velocity ratio equals to distance moved by effort, which is Y all over what x but here we have x over y that means it is what one all over velocity ratio for your knowledge of mathematics it is called reciprocal law of reciprocal 
Now, we know that our load over effort is what? Mechanical advantage. And 1 all over VR will give us this times 100%. We have our efficiency. This is the formula with which we'll be calculating our efficiency of any machine. Now, note, since MA, not MA means mechanical advantage, decreases with increase in friction. That is, note, anywhere you see MA, it depends on friction. MA depends on friction. But VR does not depend on friction. Take note. It follows that efficiency decreases with increase in temperature. That is, when efficiency increases, that means there is decrease in friction. And when there is increase in friction, there is always decrease in efficiency. Now, the formula above is not the basic definition of efficiency. It is only relationship between efficiency, MA, and VR. Note, the efficiency of a machine is usually not up to 100%. As part of the work done is used to overcome friction. Only ideal machine can give 100% efficiency that is why you see some machine develop machine develop it because of friction example what does it mean that the ma of a machine is four now it means that the ratio of load to effort is four to one that is when the load is 20 newton Effort will be what? 5 Newton. That is the meaning. When the effort is 100 Newton, your effort will be 25 Newton. That is the meaning of that statement. What does it mean that the v, VR of a machine is 5? It means that the distance moved by the effort is five times the distance moved by the load. Look at, we have VR, that is, let's say, distance moved by load, by effort, let's say it is one, and this one is what, five. That is, the load will move five times more than the effort. That is the meaning of that statement. Example two, a machine with a velocity ratio five, require 100 joules of work to raise a load of 500 newton through a vertical distance of 1.5 meters find the efficiency and the mechanical advantage of the machine now we say efficiency equals to work output over work input that is the energy the work you input you work on the machine and this is the result we call it output now when we write it in form of force times distance that is the output it is the load that is moving load times load distance all over work input and the work input has been given to be 1000 joules now what is the load 500 newton the distance by the load is what 1.5 divided by the input work which is 1000 when you calculate 1 2 this one is 50 50 times 1.5 it will be 75 centimeter that is the efficiency of the machine number two we have to calculate the mechanical advantage of the machine and we know that also efficiency can also be written as this MA over VR times 100 and our VR is 1.55 I mean it has no unit just like the mechanical advantage now input your value we have E to be 75 percent we are looking for MA over 5 times 100 now cross multiply 
75 times 5 divided by 100. Our answer is 3.75. You can see mechanical advantage has no units, just like velocity ratio. A machine has a velocity ratio of 5 and 80% efficient. What effort will be needed to lift a load of 2000 Newton with the aid of this machine? We know that mechanical advantage equals to L all over E, that is load over effort. But we can't find the effort unless we first of all find, look for mechanical advantage. Now, from our formula again, our E is 80, MA over 5 times 100, VR is 5. Now, divide by 1, both sides by 100, we have 80 divided by this. Now, MA equals to 80 times 5 divided by 100. That means our mechanical advantage equals to 4. But MA equals to load all over effort. Now, make effort, sorry to the formula, we have load all over MA equals to 2000 all over 4, that is 500. That is, an effort of 500 moves a load of 2000 Newton. Example 3, a machine whose efficiency is 75 is used to lift a load of 100 Newton. Calculate the effort put into the machine if the velocity ratio is 5. Like I said, efficiency is this, which is equal to 75 we have been given. Now, MA over 4 equal to 75 all over 4. You can just divide both sides by 100. 100. This one will cancel away, leaving you with MA over 4 equals to 75 over 100. Now, MA equals to... 4 times 75 will be 300 divided by 100 equals to 3. But MA equals to load all over effort, just like the previous example. Effort is equal to 33.33 Newton. Now, look at this example again. The efficiency of a machine is 60%. Find in Joe the work done by a student using this machine to raise a load of 150 kg through a vertical distance of 2.5. This is the load and this is the load distance. We are looking for the work done by the student. Look at it here. You have to convert kilogram to newton by multiplying it with 110 times 10. That is this is it here. Times 2.5. Now, divide both sides by 100, that's why we have it here. 60 all over 100 equals to 150 times 10 times 2.5 divided by work done by the student. Now, cross multiply, work done by the student equals to 150 times 10 times 2.5 times 100 divided by 60. Your answer will be 6 to 5, 0 joules. That is the work done by the student. Assignment. A machine with a velocity ratio of 30 moves a load of 3000 Newton. When an effort of 200 Newton is applied, what is the efficiency of the machine? A machine has a velocity ratio 6 and is 80% 80% efficient. What effort will be needed to lift a load of 300 Newton with this machine? That is that. Now, another example is explain why the efficiency of a machine is usually less than 100%. Now, we look at the type of machine in our next lesson until then that we meet again stay blessed